Hey YouTube, what's good? Ryan Nelson and this is Jonga and welcome back to the channel. Today we have another Locals and Decks series, but before I start today, I just want to give a little bit of a what and a why. Uh, you know, what am I doing here? Um, well, I just like to play Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, not really. Uh, I've been playing, I guess, competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! for about 11 years now. I like to think I, I'm good. I have some event tops. But in the recent years, say the last three, four years, I've just been more concerned with deck building and strategy. So I really care, I'm really passionate about those things, and I'm, you know, I like to share like what I've been doing at my locals and you know, just the ideas I have in my head. And you know, the why is just I like to, I guess, put this down in a recorded form. So not only for you guys to watch and to learn, but also for myself to look back on and, you know, enjoy what I've done. Uh, you know, I don't have time to cover every deck, but, you know, I generally try to keep up with to date with like most card releases and what's good. And who knows if I like a deck, yeah, I'll run with it. And I especially like decks that, you know, act as engine pieces and can fit in a lot of different strategies. So with that out of the way, I hope that gives some more context as what I'm doing here. But the first deck we have, I actually played this two weeks ago. Uh, I was a bit depressed that week, or actually no, that was the week prior, but that, but this week in particular, so two weeks ago, uh, I felt that this was kind of boring and I didn't really want to make a whole video just on, you know, played a couple locals, only like one deck. But uh, so yeah, this is a Hero Despia, Hero branded Despia again. I played this recently actually, and I actually commented in that video that uh, Hero Lives might come to three, and uh, yeah, the ban list happened and it did. So that was really nice. Yeah, uh, I played this at two locals. I played this in nine rounds total. So, wow, that's like a regional, I guess. But, you know, over the space of two locals, uh, yeah. I went 4-1 at the first locals, and then I went 4-0 at the next. So an 8-1 game score overall, pretty damn good. And I'll just say at the start, this deck is really, really, really fun. I highly recommend anyone playing Branded Despia to give this deck a try. Also hero players that might not be too into the meta this is a good way to i guess expose yourself to other meta strategies and to perhaps mix up your stale boring hero deck um in essence it's just really strong like uh the synergy between the hero and the despia cards and the branded cards is uh really good because you know branded fusion sends Sh shadow mist which you know turns on your hero engine and hero lives just a really 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 broken card in that you can either get Mars Change or you get Stratos to search for Vion, which gets Poly. Similar like how Edge Imp Chain would do it. You know, it's a similar engine, but instead you're working with bodies. And if you get the right matchup for your Dark Law, well, it can just be GG. Like I played versus, uh, you know, Invoked Eldlich, and damn, it was just uh, brutal. Brutal. His whole, both of his engines just crushed by Dark Law. Crushed. And of course, you get to play uh, Destroy Phoenix Enforcer as well, like, um, which is really refreshing. You can often hard make this as well in the very basic, simple one cut combo. But overall, 50 card recipe, you kind of need the deck size to fit in all the engine pieces. Uh, only a couple of go second cards, so the Super Poly and the Droplet, they're just the most generic all round ones. In theory, you could cut off the Allure of Darkness and maybe one must change for more go second cards, but I definitely think you don't fit hand traps very well in this deck but i think the allure also has a purpose in just because you get so many free heroes off your card searches and of course bandaging tragedy is always really nice and then i think uh the dramaturge is pretty standard now um yeah uh only one bread in red and one banishment but i guess they both serve similar functions i guess in the extra deck um not as standard as some I probably should be playing Double Masquerade, but I like to have the Quietus access for certain game states. And you get to play Alba Lenatus in this deck, mainly because you get the beneficial uh, Search Fusion Destiny interaction sometimes, but you can also just wreck your Dragon Link opponents, which I unfortunately did to my good friend uh, at one of the tournaments. Uh, I kind of had nothing going on for me, and I'm like, damn, if I just draw Albaz right now, I win the game. And I drew Albaz. I guess today well, that, that day was my day. Um, playing Mud Dragon of the Swamp because I believe you it unbricks some hands of like hero cuts, um, but it's also just good for Super Poly. Um, yeah, dangerous. 
surprisingly came up in a few lines if you don't know what it does you just uh you go fusion d and you can send uh tragedy and a d hero to make destiny which will get you your alibar which gets you a branded card you can't branded fusion of that on that turn of course because you're locked into dark hero but the setup it gives you is really 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 important if you just break on fusion d and you have other cards to work with despia cards like getting branded in red is pretty good and you usually can set up the uh, DP with the Theater of the Branded in that particular opening. So that's also really nice. Um, side deck, uh, nothing much to say. Pretty standard here, apart from maybe there can only be one. Because, you know, you're usually ending on Warrior and Worm and Fairy. So, uh, again, when you play nine rounds of Yu-Gi-Oh, you kind of see everything. And uh, every card in this deck was good. I felt that none of the ratios could be changed. So, again, highly recommend you give this deck a shot if you're into heroes and you're into Brandon de Despia. Okay, so that was two weeks ago, so now we're just into the previous week. Um, man, uh, what can I say about uh, Umi Fish? Uh, I'm gathering the, uh, the knowledge and the cards to play Shark. I think you can play uh, Shark in a lot of different ways, like some with Floodgate, some with uh, more engine, more explosive power, and more consistency. But I, uh, I don't know why I play this like it's not my style of deck it's a very back row heavy anti-meta style of deck using the new umi cards uh the kairu shin lord you know as a gozen match the jellyfish is an omni negate but the entire deck requires you to have umi on the field which is a legendary ocean in this case but from my dueling stays when i used to play a bit of duelings i really enjoyed the citadel whale sea stealth attack deck so i guess i played this deck to pay homage to that deck because man, that was a really cool deck and a fan favorite of mine. Uh, I have really no explanation for the 44 cards other than I just wanted to fit all the cards I wanted to fit into a deck. Like in theory, looking at this on paper, you can easily just cut this random summon limit. But I just felt that you needed to have floodgates to be really explosive. You also didn't just want to draw too many field spell related cards. Um, I guess the most appealing part of this deck other than you know being a back row trap deck is you get, you get to play extrav and duality so this deck feels really consistent but naturally there are some problems with you know playing a beat down strategy like usually if you don't see these dudes or see this card you obviously lose but that being said it was a lot of fun and somehow i won three rounds and only lost one round playing th this deck don't know how but i did um and surprisingly had some highly interactive games believe it or not um I guess your inherent weakness in your main deck is you simply like, cannot go second. You cannot break boards. It's the only way possible you can break a board is if you summon Legendary Ocean, uh, if you activate Legendary Ocean, and then you just summon your Kairu Yushin Lord. And then if the summon is successful because it's a continuous effect, the Goza match effect is immediately applied. So your opponent's big board as a monster can get wiped. Uh, that nearly came up for me going second one time, but unfortunately I did not draw a Legendary Ocean, which was very sad. Um, so yeah, if you don't know what these cards do, uh, Warrior of Atlantis searches the ocean, Ice Shade Tremora, you can pitch it from your hand to Special of Water, but I kept drawing this alongside Duality, so it kind of sucked. Uh, Fish Sonar searches the Umi cards with Umi in the name, Doom Kraken is a quick effect, Compulse, uh, Compulse is your monster, bounces there, uh, pops theirs, and then bounce back to your hand to negate the attack. Uh, Foolish Barrow Goods sends Ice Barrier and then you banish Ice Barrier to dump a level 5 and then you, you can take a water back to your hand. So it's like a way to search these level 5s. But sometimes you can also Foolish Goods Legendary Ocean if you draw a Sea Stealth Attack because Sea Stealth Attack can activate it straight away when you activate Sea Stealth Attack. But other than that, uh, you got Kyri uh, Fury of Kairu Shin, Torrential Tribute, 6 cards. Any deck playing like Torrential Tribute and Strike just feels really good when you draw them in conjunction. I'm playing Dogmatica Punishment because you can send Toad to add back your resources other than send Entis to assist you in clearing monsters. Uh, this extra deck was very rushed, very bad. Uh, definitely need to play uh, Silent Honor Arknight or a Castell because my one, my, one of my opponents summoned uh, Sword Soul Supreme uh, Cheng Ying and I had zero clean waste out in my deck. I had to make the most obscure Zeus I think I've ever done and I barely won that game. But, so yeah, definitely adjust the extra deck if you were to play this to have a more well-rounded approach. 
and it's kind of awkward because you know legendary ocean reduces your levels so this is four and then these are threes so i should probably be playing a three as well somewhere in here but i guess these are just for those really obscure situations where we have a clear legendary ocean and then you know these are level four again and you can actually have summon some very powerful cards obviously shark toad abyss dweller and stealth kraken are ridiculous cards and side deck I tried to do a bit of like an all-rounder thing. Uh, not really sure I should be citing Mystic Mine. Uh, definitely should be citing stuff like uh, Cosmic Cyclone and just simple one-for-one -one removal cards because again, your opponent sticks Chengus on the field and then how do you out it? You know, they stick their tower monster, how do you out it? Probably maybe get Gamma Seal or something is probably best. But, you know, when you have the ability to side in like the more, the more floodgates, um, to round out the bad traps into the more good traps you just auto win some games like you just can't lose if you go first but again yeah mystic mind set rotation this text is like really hard to kill with mystic mind uh it's probably highly unlikely you ever want to turn off your mystic mind so you're trying to deck out but then usually you thin your deck and you don't really deck out so going back probably wouldn't play this again but in general, probably wouldn't play Umi ever again either, because it's it's a flawed strategy. It's a back row deck that needs to have a field spell on the field. It's just a flawed strategy. You cannot, you can't do it. It's just not possible. Okay, but anyway, it's so much fun, and uh, I'm gonna play Shark soon. Shark is the real thing. Uh, Marine Cess is okay. I don't like Marine Cess because it's just a worse Salaman Great and Attic Nista. I don't see much point playing that deck over other decks. Maybe I will one day. Who knows? Maybe I'll eat my words. Okay. Next deck, um, what do I say about this? Uh, in theory, it's good. Like in theory, it's clean. Um, but in practice, you never draw Lily or Disc and you draw Duke and Regulus and your brand diffusion never resolves to, I guess, uh, dump your Yule for your Regulus and yeah, you just brick. Um, but in theory, if I were to cut the Theron cards out of this deck, then it's a you know standard Predator player and Brandon Despia, but I just wanted to give it a shot. Um, again, I went at this locals, I went one win, three losses, and two of the rounds were just strictly me misplaying and not being good enough with my deck. I feel like I could have won all the rounds I used this, even when I was drawing bad and bricking, but I just played this deck so badly, and it's really sad. I really want to play it again, but I just uh, I need a Predator practice so I can play that one. But yeah, the Therion, definitely not the way. But again, in theory, if you have opening and fusion resolve, and you put the plant in your grave for the Lily, that's nuts. And yeah, Stay Sailor, Roma uh, Marine, that card is bonkers. It is really, really, really good. Like, the Predator plants really need no explanation at this point. It's quite a good standard, very, you know, you can play minimal or you can play like full maximum engine, and they're really good, really good cards. Like, this engine I actually cut down from previous time when I played this, but even then, you don't need to play, like, all these Predator Plant cards. It's just mainly for Romarine and Buffalo. Um, they just give you the extra material, and the Biblips gives you the, the floating. But, yeah, this deck was very sad. I just bricked, bro. Therion cards and bricking. I didn't learn my lesson. The next locals I played, I played Therion cards again, and I bricked again. But that's, an, uh, that's for the next deck. I guess in the side deck... Again, pretty standard all-rounder side deck. Like you have to play all-rounder at locals because you encounter all kinds of strategy. But I guess just point out Eradicator Epidemic Virus. Um, I'm becoming a huge fan of this deck in like every deck, as you'll see in the next couple of decks. Um, just the ability to blank out spells, sometimes even if they're chainable, as long as you hit like one or two good spells that they probably side into you to break your board, or it forces them out in weird ways, or you get the knowledge of their entire hand, I feel like you just can't lose most games. Like it punishes all the Dark Ruler players. People on Dark Ruler and Talents, they just get punished. Like it's, and like all decks require power spells. Most decks do. But this deck in particular, gets so many free Dark Monsters. I guess in the extra deck here, I don't have uh, Predator Plant, Trifovertum, I really should be using that, but I let a friend borrow it and didn't get it back, so I suffered, but I guess in theory, Proskenion is nuts because you can do big fusions of like a Despia, a Predator Plant, and a Romarine. But yeah, uh, again, a really good deck. 
it's like you've got how many you got one two three four five six seven lilies but no you play a four round tournament and you don't draw lily or disc or terraforming or set rotation but you but you draw missing mine a lot and man i suck playing around like playing with me missing mine i suck i really need to reevaluate why i'm playing missing mine because i really think i suck with it every time i draw it and i use it it's like good until it's not good until i fuck it up in some way until i misplay it horribly so maybe moving forward i gotta cut that out of my deck because it's 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 painful it's painful all right moving on to the last couple of decks um this is gooey uh there's a called past uh but maybe another a for pasta but i don't know but yeah punk adventure synchron therion so you know i play therion again didn't learn my lesson from the previous day but for some reason this locals had like 30 40 people and we played six rounds so i got a mini regional out of nowhere very surprising very cool and i went 5-1 I nearly went 6-0 somehow, even though most hands I drew pretty like averagely and I, you know, bricked on these Therion cards again. But there were some hands where I just drew the absolute nuts, and I feel bad for a lot of my friends who I beat playing this. They know who they are, but again, I just drew so 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 good. And like again, don't don't ask me about the all-rounder rate like two of ratio. That's an inside joke in you know my community, but again you draw these when you need them and you just win the game and if you draw them going first well you set this you use this or you send this off souls and it's never bad <laughs> it's never bad um so yeah what are we looking at here like what is the main objective uh it's a bit different to i guess punk punk adventure because i'm playing uh, necrosynchron spore fengli with the, the lily so if you don't know what fengli the Solder Prom does. I just call him Pineapple. Is uh, when you mill it off a monster effect at someone's back. It's mainly just there to be an, another target for Necrosynchron if you already use Spore. But you know, it, it is pretty good. Um, like the Necrosynchron lines mainly with Magician Souls. You single for Marshall, uh, Marshall Meta Marcher, which triggers Necrosynchron and summons you back another tuner. I actually won a couple of games simply because of that interaction, just giving me so many monsters. Like I had to force an access code line and he simply couldn't stop. Like, you know, I summoned Celine first in one of the lines and then he had to stop Celine and then it's just like, okay, Hulk into the next line to make the access code win. So it was, it was, it was pretty, pretty, pretty sick. Other than that, you synchro and echo synchron with a level eight to make Baron. Very easy to do so with Chaos Ruler and Therion cards. Very easy to do. And uh, yeah, you just get so many free monsters off nothing. And you know, I think the biggest strength of the game right now is just Selene access code. Uh, maybe access code should be banned. Just the sheer frequency of you can just end your opponent off like a single card, especially in decks like these. Because the way this deck climbs into that card is just uh, very unfair. Very, very, very unfair. Um, You'll see, I am playing the Baby Dragons. I think these deck, these cards are actually really, really good in the standard builds of Punk Adventure Synchro because their level is good. Uh, Foxy Tune and Ogre Dance make it really easy to get this live. And, you know, Magician Souls makes it really easy to get these live. Like, your, your deck facilitates them so well. And being level 4 is just nuts with Rose Dragons because that's Shooting Riser and that's Moonlit Rose Dragon as well. So... Yeah, I think people should start playing this more. I highly recommend it. Uh, I'm not playing a, that heavy of a hand trap package because I personally don't like hand traps too much. But, you know, looking at the deck, it's like you got three Ash, Avela, simply for the Hulk, Selene line. And then you've got, you know, Droplet, Talents, Ta uh, and Duck Ruler. So you got like 10 going second cards. But then, you know, Adventure cards function really good going second. Or you simply just draw so well, your opponent cannot stop you, which happens several times. Like this deck probably this deck needs to be addressed on the ban list, like for sure. Because you open hands of, you know, the Trinity hand, you know, 2020 Trinity, which I'd call like, you know, right E Telly prep. You know, any combination of right E Telly souls, or which can be done in like Foxy Tune, Enchantress, and Hard Drawing Souls, you are God. Like your deck combos ridiculously hard. Way, way, way too hard. And yeah, something needs to be done. Uh, I'm not too sure what needs to be done other than maybe Scythe because uh, that's the most obvious hit. I think Scythe makes the board fair because Scythe just puts your opponent onto having cards 
like very specific outs. So definitely hope that they ban ban Scythe. Because it'll make playing these decks more enjoyable as well. Because you have to think more creatively and think about your end boards rather than just tunneling every single combo into Halk Dagda. And yeah, it'll just make that more enjoyable. And so as I said, uh, with the eradicated epidemic virus, um, in this deck in particular, you can just summon back Chaos Ruler. Often you can't make the hot red, so you just summon back Chaos Ruler and then you eradicate it. Or you can summon back Ochre Dance, she's got the stats needed to be tributed for the Eradicator. And again, you draw this and you and you feel like you are God. Like you just put them on so many cards. Like it, there's not many cards. I mean, there's not many cards in the game that out that. Like if you, especially if you have Herald of Arclight and you summon back Chaos Ruler and then you eradicated them with a Halk Dagda, it's probably unbeatable. I'm not sure what what beats that combo. Uh, it's pretty rough on there. It's pretty rough for them. Um, it is so rough. It is so rough. Um, so yeah, Therion cards bad. So then moving on to the next locals, I played it again, just with no Therion cards. So this deck, 5-1, nearly won that locals, but this deck, 4-0, won that locals because my deck was just drawing so good every single round, no dead Therion cards. But then it also takes away from, you know, why you're playing Spore. I play Spore with one of the target, which is this, but it still just happens. Like you either draw one, you mill it, or you summon one off this, and you just always have that interaction. And it's just mainly useful for the climbing, for like, you know, Anima into Hulk into, you know, uh, it's just, it's just useful. It's just, it's just nice. It just works. Um, it's like having more copies of Red Rose in your deck as well kind of like you draw the, this engine you use that engine and then you summon that engine of Hulk and vice versa um so yeah highly recommend you know punk adventure synchro it's really 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 broken no one needs to be told that but i'll tell you anyway because it's a youtube video i, I gotta tell you um but i had so much fun playing the, these decks like on this day I had to play 10 rounds of Yu-Gi-Oh for some reason i don't know why but I don't know, my energy, I, I could take it. I could do all the 10 rounds and it was refreshing. It was like a YCS. <laughs> it was like a YCS I, I, I don't have here in Australia, which is very sad. I wish they'd give us a YCS. Very, 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 very sad. Anyway, thanks for watching. Probably a super long video, but hope you listened to the end. 1.5 speed, really useful to getting through these long, uh, talky style YouTube videos. And I hope to have more amazing decks uh, ready in the future. There's some new locals in my area in the city where I live uh, came opened up so I, I'm really excited to play there and I got many more ideas, many more decks I got to work on and then I might do a video about Splite soon and Tiara Lament. Tiara Lament is just sick. Like that deck feels good. Like Splite feels good but Tiara Lament just feels good in in its own way just because you're milling and you're fusing. I like those kinds of engines. I'm a big fan of shit all so big fan of Tiara Lament. Anyway guys thank you for watching Ryan from Jonga. Peace out. Thank you.